Hello everyone. I just want to let you know that this video is 2 hours and 30 minutes long. Now before you X out this video, like I know most of you or a lot of you are going to be doing, hear me out. It's totally worth the watch. It gives you a completely new perspective, at least I think so, of RuneFest. You kind of see it through my eyes. And even though I don't commentate throughout the video, I do add some comment strips of text at places where I kind of have a thought. But instead of me just rambling on about how the video is, just cut to the video and I'll talk to you guys later. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Vi har pilen nu alldeles langt hos deg. Colin and uh, I'm going to MC this week's main stage insider sessions. Last year's RuneFest, the first edition was, as you know, a massive success, but this year we're really pushing the boundaries and I'm sure you will have a fantastic weekend. Please check your lanyards to find out what's happening and when. But rest assured, I will give you some gentle reminders as we go through the sessions. Beware, there are some surprises lined up for you behind both virtual and real doors. So just be careful where you tread. Now our first session in a couple of minutes goes back to the very beginning. Looking at then and now, a decade in Gillinor with Mark discussing 10 years of RuneScape with Andrew and Paul Gower. So sit back, relax and enjoy the rest of the day and I'll see you in about 45 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome lead designer of RuneScape, Mod Mark. Right, so session number one is all about 
about the last 10 years. It's all about the big updates that have changed the world. Now I can sit here for hours and talk to you about how Rax the Ogre changed my life, but you'd be well bored with that. Who you really want to hear talking about this kind of stuff are the men that have built the game. The men that have done more to RuneScape than anybody else ever. So, please join me, put your hands together, as we welcome Andrew and Paul Gower to the stage. Alright chaps, hello. So you know what they look like now, so you can mark them later for some autographs. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to talk about is quests. Now, quests have been the main meat and two veg of RuneScape for a long time. Put your hands up if you like quests! Yeah! yeah! Awesome! Good, good, that's good. Otherwise this will be really boring for you. <laughs> uh, so, first question then. Uh, tell us about quests, you know. We've done more quests than anything else. What were you thinking? You know, what were Quest wants to be all about when you first started the game? To make something a new script, and once we made it, we were kind of so short of content, it was like, well, we're going to keep this in the game while we're scrapping it. Because um, at least it's something in the game for people to do, so put it as much as possible in the shortest amount of time as possible. Andrew, uh, you said to me a couple of times that we wanted Quest to almost feel like a game within a game. Yeah, this kind of hidden experience. Yeah, I mean, exactly, because, you know, we knew that a lot of the game was about, you know, getting your levels up. And, really we made with the cutscene there at the top. A little bit better than a couple of nights talking to each other. So, uh, let's talk about the world map now. Uh, the world map's changed quite a, li quite a lot over the years. Uh, could you tell us how it evolved and, you know, how it sort of came to be? <laughs> So uh, make sure you look at your lanyards for what is on and when. Now, this subject has been filling the forum pages. <laughs> You've been a bit excited about this, so I believe. Breaking bots. Okay, so leading this session will be Mark Gerhard. And after this session, in about 15 or 20 minutes, so we will be having some Q&A. So... If you haven't already thought about them, get thinking about the questions. Okay, I'm going to hand you over. Enjoy. every day for the reason to go to bed, just to give you guys some experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you know, the, the team and I are deeply dedicated to my view on that, but and the, the short answer is that you can't because it breaks the game. How does it break the game? Well, it's not just the balancing and the economy and the inflation and the deflation, which you know, obviously a lot of you feel so acutely, but it fundamentally changes the nature of the game fundamentally takes it away from the, you know, what is a multiplayer social ex experience to a single player, anti-social experience. You know, if someone is botting, they're not sitting there with their shadow burn, you know, they're, they're a ghost. They disable, they don't want their friends to know they're botting. So they're hidden from the game, they're there, they're there as an active player, but they're quiet. 
So, you know, you walk up, how you go like, or you log in, none of my friends are online. Well, hopefully all your friends are Boris, let's say. <laughs> Who are you going to talk to? Okay. You go and do some resource mining, wood cutting, whatever the case may be. No one's talking. Everyone's just very focused. And I remember, you know, my, my very first game experience some four years ago, where I started, and you know, kind of as you exploring this world, having these great experiences where you know, someone can say, "Hey, can help me with this." Also, remember being lured into the wilderness, and getting punished, and all those things. <laughs> but yeah, but hey, it's part of the learning, uh, part of the learning curve. But um, you know, I, I remember literally people, you know, you just hanging about with a bunch of people, effectively talking shit. And you leave after playing for a few hours with five new friends. Oh, yes, oh this is so that. Oh, okay, because we. Because Sunny Ball is here. Oh, it's just a murder. It's just a red shot. It's just a murder. It's just a murder. It's just a murder.
costumes out there. There have been a few that didn't quite make um, the final three. We've got three prizes, well, we've got three awards that we want to give out, really. A few that really impressed me. Um, the guys came with Stomp, I thought was very clever. Uh, that was really nice. Um, you know, really runescape you know, it took ages for people to work out exactly what the hell you were, which I think is really quite runescape indeed. Girl in the cat costume, that was amazing. Yeah, there was a girl in the cat costume. There's been some amazing uh, mages as well, as well about, and, and I love all your skill cakes. The skill cakes are fantastic. I'm glad you made the effort. Thanks very much. But of course, there could only be three winners. Three, three winners. We tried to pick one. It was impossible. So we went That's three. right. Um, so we managed to find a couple of photos of the people that won. Um, there's one photo we couldn't find because I think that she was uh, here at the beginning of the day and must have changed her costume because it was quite hot. Um, and she looked pretty hot too. Yeah. Uh, and should, should, we, should we announce that now? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, so that is the lass who was dressed up as Nyx. She had a blue mask. Where is she? She over there. There she hey. is. Very long, um, absolutely blown me away. Like really, really impressive. So, and he's huh? got some prizes. I'll be right back. Oh, he's going to go and get some prizes. Anyway, the next costume was fantastic. Who here has managed to fight next and defeat her? Put up your hands. Wow. Oh, hey, yeah. look. It's like we got the balancing right on that one then. <laughs> he's just one of the next one. Here she comes. Give her a round of applause, please. Um, we got a no? Or... No, she's got yeah. a huge goodie bag full of stuff. Goodie bag full of stuff! Yeah. Awesome! The goodie bag. I'm sure Pete would agree with us. Oh, Pretty cool yeah. costume. Oh. Paul? Should we uh, do the next one then, yeah? yeah? why not? Okay, you can't see this, so hang on a minute. I'm gonna run up to the camera. Oh! I think... We all know who it is. It's the guy in the full primal. Yeah. Right, incredible costume. Where is he at? Here he there is. There he is. Last year we called him Mr. Bandos. We did. And I we actually know this guy in the office as Mr. Bandos. When people talk about Roomfest last year, they say, and do you remember that Mr. Bandos, dude? Well, he's blown us away again. 
So well done to you, man. Big props. Good man. Can we can we see your costume? Can you can you get up? Thanks, man. Put it on. Put on the helmet. I'm happy with the shield of the sword. That's fine. You don't go into all that effort without putting the helmet on, surely? Just take a long time. Someone plonk it on his head. <laughs> I said, shove it on! Now we can't see, try and climb up here. Now that, come on, the very least of all. Come on. Look at that, we really. That is quite something. So here we go, Mr. Full Primal. Don't come at me with that sword. <laughs> Just marvel, marvel. Seriously, again, okay, another round of applause, please. Mr. Full Primal. We're like Primal Bandos? I don't know. Well, okay, and the third person, this is my favourite. Um, we do a lot of cool stuff uh, recently. Um, not you, Pete. It's not you. Sit down, man. Sit down. Pete. No, you, Pete. 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 I'm sorry, Pete. Dude. I know. I know. Big love. Big love. So the third person, I'm going to bring it up to the camera now. I'm pretty sure you'd all agree with me that this, this one actually scared quite a lot of us. You know, we were a little bit worried when we saw this one. I can't so, see it though. I can't actually see it. I can't. I hope he's here. Maybe no, you're like missing. Well, Mr. Nomad. <laughs> People are actually backing off into the corner, thinking, oh no, not again, please, please, don't come up with your dodgy attack that you only do when I'm hiding behind a pillar. I mean, who come up with that? Hey, Chris L, wherever you are, good work. Yeah. Is he really not here? Is he really not here? Yeah. Where is he? a lot of effort to craft to finally make content for you. It's fantastic when you come back at us with something even better. So thanks very much, Mr. Nomad. Congratulations. Right. But we did say that there are so many great costumes, it's so difficult to actually choose that we thought we'd try and give out a few more prizes just because we've got a few. That's right. Um, so, so in traditional, I don't know if any of you have been up to any of the player meetups that we've done recently, but we like to do this thing where we just sort of start lobbing t-shirts around. Just so sort of we've also got a cop hair for the day. Oh, sorry, sir. No, you go for it. This is our cop hair for the day. Hello. Hello. Do we have our second cop hair for the day? There he is. Right, let's go! Throw! 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 Come on! Nice. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
These are the best to use of glove, man. All right, glove. So let's just one second. Golden gnome, video awards, dudes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, golden gnomes. Oh, check. Live audience. Check. Gushy video speeches. Check. Party beat. Check. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely check. Okay, so dudes, dudettes, and everything in between. Internet, oh internet, oh internet, oh internet, it gives us the best of humankind, as well as the worst, yeah? Yeah, you can watch, you can watch my own cat fart a rainbow for ten hours straight. <laughs> or listen to the most thought-provoking song ever composed, The, the Virtues of a Friday. <laughs> All these things are possible, but in the beginning, there was nothing. Dudes, there was nothing. Sorry. There was nothing. And then the internet came, out of blue, exploded into existence. And then suddenly, there were online gaming sites, torrent sites. There were loads of different platforms for very talented people to share what they could do. Dudes. Sorry. And with the internet came YouTube, and with YouTube, an opportunity for filmmakers across the world to share their filmmaking talent and to show off what they can do. And this is what tonight is all about. We know that RuneScape has a fantastic video making community, yeah? A fantastic video making community. And these are the people these awards are about. We want to award and reward and honour the people who put time, effort, and actually want to quantity their relationships on the line to create the videos that we're going to see tonight. Better. But before we look at all seven categories and move on with tonight's awards, let's have a look at some of the best entries we have this year. This year. Sensory organs, they deplete often an imaginable amount of sensory cell activity, thus decoding. Okay. Yeah. Give it up! Well, this is 
incredible entries and even a secret revealed to mark for you. And within three feet of magic, please welcome Paul M. and Gnop. <laughs> Move out, move out. There you go, there you go, stand on that. Just get up there, come on. Okay, so, amazing entries this year. That's a, come on. Amazing competition. It's a little bit funny, a little bit funny. Okay. I was on TV last night. What were you on? Chris Lemon. Anybody see it? No, no. Do you know what? We definitely didn't see that below. Hang on, hang on. TV. And you play games. Very much. And then, didn't you see me? Do. Okay, so. Which one do we do first then? First category. First one is. Anyone? First effects. Oh, there you go, do you want to do the honours? I'm here, I'm in charge. <laughs> the use of best effects. Nosferatu! Hooray! Okay. Now, unfortunately, Nosferatu couldn't be here. However, his brother and co-star is definitely here. David, are you here? <laughs> David, David. Where are you, David? Come on up, man. Come on up. Oh, yeah. Be there on that. Congratulations. Do you have anything to say? Um, for Atu, my brother couldn't be here today because he had to have lung surgery. Oh. So I'm definitely going to take this home and give it straight to him. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Awesome. Well done. Well done. Okay, what have you got next? Animation. Animation. Excellent voice projection there. Who is it? Who, who's won it? Best of animation. <laughs> Jeffrey Sun. Jeffrey Sun. Jeffrey Sun. Now Jeffrey Sun won the one last year, so he's also here because we flew all the way here. Come on up, Jeffrey Sun. You've got a collection now, you've got two. Congratulations. What would you like to say? Uh, actually, um, I'm not going to say anything, I'm going to oh, okay. do something for you. Huh? I promised some friends to do something special when I want, so uh, please stand back. <laughs> <laughs> I am worried. That's us done, man. Should we go? Yeah, you can go. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure. Oh, I better leave this behind. Paul M. and Gronk! Give it up! Congratulations to the Gronk winners, dude. You are rocked. And you took my golden arm away as well. So, let's move on for the next two awards, which are for Bay's best voice acting and use of sound. We have some pretty perfect mods for you to present this award. Yes, next. And not content with co-creating RuneScape itself, Paul Gamble apparently is also pretty versed at creating some very fun characters at the Christmas parties out here about dropping dwarves. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if the dropping is intentional. Yes, we've got Paul Gamble here and joined by the fantastic head of audio, Stephen Lord. Now, next to Lord of the Rings and Lord of the Flies and Lord Gaga. Oh. 
whatever it is. <laughs> Who knows? We have both of those fantastic people. He's actually my fourth favourite lord. That's my sentence. She is my fourth favourite lord. So to award the next two prizes, please welcome Paul Gower and Stephen Lord. Nosferatu and Evil Yakuza have got two excellent finalists, so Paul, the envelope. That's the right one. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 best, best voice acting. The winner is... The best voice acting, Evil Yakuza. Yeah. Oh, people. 
Hollywood, where I'm lying here, uh, well, anyways, I hope you all are having fun at Winfest. I'm really overjoyed that you all like the video. I'd like to thank my friends and family for their encouragement and support, and I'd also... Oh, and Magpie says thanks as well. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, and take care. Funniest video of something I don't know anything about. You're the end of it, go for it. Okay, uh, here we go. So the nominees were Sundown Raven for his awesome, mysterious old mischief film, and Bum Bum 007, no, why is I saying that name, uh, for his excellent fight against Ross. Right then. And the winner. And the winner is, for the funniest video, 
So, and now it's like a, a famous film or something, possibly, I don't know. Do we have anything else you want to throw in there right now? No. I'm probably, uh, okay. What are the balloon animals, please? What are the balloon animals? Blue animals. And it's now last one, I suppose. If these guys are not confused enough, this will definitely tip them over the edge. <laughs> What world is this? Uh, what world is this? I think we need more. Scores 53 points. 
Big round of applause. That's both of B down, worth 11 points each. But there's still plenty to play for, still three more questions to go. Let's move on to question number 17. Who should release a remix of the RuneScape intro music? Ladies and gentlemen, vote now for who you would like to see remixing RuneScape. Is it A, Rick Astley? We got a cap down for this one. Oh, I'm sure we do. Is it perhaps B, Lady Gaga? Maybe it's C, Jedward? Or D, Andrew Lloyd Webber? Oh, there's a green thing at the top. I'm hoping that's going to turn red in about 20 seconds. Oh, well, from where I say it, obviously. <laughs> Oh, oh, you've got them seen the show. Oh, no, you've got them. You're keeping them all secret. Yes, yeah, good. Well done. I'm terribly worried there. And let's see what our contestants are voting for. One for Lady Gaga, a Rick Astley, and a Rick Astley. I have absolutely no idea. Let's see what you've got. Another 39 points. Mr. K has 39 more points. And Mr. Roxanne has a hard earned 26 more points. We have two questions to go. Remember, you are going to decide the fate of the three people up on stage. One will live triumphantly as a hero, the other two will live very, very nearly as triumphantly as heroes. But the first prize is a slightly bigger card. So, question number 18. Why does the wise old man live in Draenor? Perhaps he's scared of sea slugs. Who isn't? Maybe not the property prices. C, to spy on the wizard's tower. Or D, to go from spot to John Willows. Couple more seconds on that one. Let's see what our contestants are voting for. Oh, is it oh, oh, is that? Well, everybody agrees. We're all agreed up here. Are you all agreed with the audience? Well, let's find out. We are indeed. That is 43 points for everybody. That's back back to KFC net. So, we have one final question. This year's room quiz. Number 19. Where would you look for teasers on forthcoming updates? But now, would you look for the behind the scenes? Perhaps B, you check out the death box. Maybe C, you look at MFG's friends chat channel. Or maybe it's D, Facebook. Let's look what we've got up on stage. Reveal your answers. A, D, Ooh, and another A. Let's see what you, the audience, will be checking for those teasers. A. So we've got another 41 points for Mr. Hat. We have, we have 27 points for Mr. Kent. And a well earned 41 points for Mr. Rucksack. Let us just total up the final scores and we can reveal who the big winner is for this year's room quiz. And while we do that, I'd like to thank you. You have been an amazing audience. You're one of the best two audiences we've ever had for a room quiz. So I can say that absolutely <laughs> sincerely. Thank you very much for that. Anticipation is killing me, I'm sure it's killing all of you as well. well thank you very much. And here we are, proof of maths. We use maths. 
So we have this to Kate in third place with 139. It's still very, very well done. You guys started to kind of vote on, on creating a character, so we shall be finishing that off from four to five. Now I hope you've all had lunch, but not eaten too much, because we'll be having a birthday cake later. I <laughs> that would get you going. Right, I'm going to hand you over to, uh, to these guys, and Tom's going to lead you on this, so enjoy the greatest glitches. <laughs> Okay, hello guys, um, we are from RuneScape QA and we're here to just show you a few of the fun glitches and random obscure things we find when testing the game. But first of all, let's introduce ourselves. So, I'm Monton H, I've been with the QA team for about four years now. I've been gaming way back since from the days of the Amiga. Uh, I think the first game that really got me gripped into gaming was Final Fantasy VII. And um, for those of you who've seen my signatures on the walls and my forum signature, you will know my favourite game character of all time is a little pink puff known as Kirby. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Mod Slayer. Um, I've only recently joined QA, but I've been in the company for the last seven months. And I've played RuneScape for just over ten years, and people ask why. My mod name is Slayer, it was my first 99, so I'm trained. And I'm hoping to be Max next year sometime, so it's the bad Hello, I'm Mod Lewis R. I've been working in RuneScape QA for just over eight months. Previously, I was the lead keyboard curator in community management. I've been playing RuneScape since the very, very start of Classic, so over 10 years game knowledge, my personal account is maxed out. Two more interesting facts about myself. For those of you who know what MTG Magic the Gathering is, I have a complete set from Alpha right through to the revised edition. And one of my more interesting hobbies is, what these guys call crazy, is jumping out of planes, also known as parachuting. Uh, hello, I'm Coco. Um, I've been with Jagex for two years now, uh, QA for five months. Um, I was previously working in ICU Night Shift, leading the bot team strategies. Um, my favourite TV show is 24, because I love The Endless. The Endless is like a film that lasts forever. And people ask me why I decided to be Mod Coco. Uh, that's because I love hot chocolate, a home of orange, mint. And I've even got banana flavour, which actually isn't that very nice, but that's the question. <laughs> so, that's us. Um, on to just a little intro about the QA team. Okay, we have got 16,975 objects, it's unique objects in the game. It's, so. it's quite amazing when you look at those numbers actually, isn't it? Because uh, a, a basic NPC check that we have to do on any project lasts about 10 minutes per one, and then you calculate how long that takes. That's a, that's a massive time for objects and NPCs. Definitely, yeah. Uh, number of quests currently live, uh, 178, okay. Uh, number of skills currently live, can anyone want to shout it out at me, take a guess? No, 25. <laughs> okay, uh, how many of them are members only? Nine. That's nine, and the rest of them are free to play accessible. Uh, 
couple more fun facts and figures here for you. These are the some more interesting one. So the total number of projects that we've released since January 2011. If anyone's got any ideas, shout out how many projects do you reckon there's been? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope not. <laughs> 68, quite close. <laughs> okay, number, number. Let's have a look now at the actual bugs. So total number of bugs found this year. <laughs> 392. Okay, this one is going to be a more controversial topic here that's discussed in the forms quite a lot. How many bugs are actually going to the live game box? The total number of bugs found pre-release, so before it ever gets to you guys. And the number for that, if we take a look here, anyone guess? 3047. Woo! I can look at the difference here. 90% of the bugs that go live. Sorry, 90% of the bugs never go live. That is a huge amount. Yeah, I'd like to add as well that the majority of the bugs that do actually go live tend to be uh, smaller issues. You get a lot of fragments and stretching and things, and obviously, occasionally, the, the odd large bug goes through as well. But it's well best. Okay, so one of the things you've come here to see the bugs and glitches. One thing I'd like to do first is introduce you to on the screen our unofficial QA mascot. This is Rocknar, who you might know from the player of House Dungeon. Now, the um, large majority of the QA team, particularly the old school QAs, love Rocknar just the way he is, he is his dopey face. Um, however, graphics obviously really want to update him. So, I want to get an opinion, show of hands, who wants to keep Rocknar looking like that? And who wants to update him? Update. His head sticks up through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Slightly more to uh, wanting to update, I'm disappointed. <laughs> so, moving on. <laughs> so then, begin with tools for testing. Uh, what we got here, the greater demon punch bag. One of the things that we test in QA is, say, a new weapon or a new piece of combat equipment, we look at the DPS, the damage per second. To do this, it could mean spawning the same NPC over and over and over, which can get quite tiresome. So one thing that we've done here is create the Greater Demon Punch Pack. As the name suggests, here's a punch pack to take a beating to actually look at this deep death with us. Uh, okay. Hi, Zeke. Um, so if you look at the red box, um, this is a common known issue that was in the live game for quite a while. Uh, when a world is rebooted um, after an update, uh, all NPCs will face south. So, as you can see in the picture, um, that looks really strange. They're not facing you initially. Um, these sort of things aren't as simple as just putting in a ticket to a developer to be fixed. Um, in this case, uh, this was an engine request. Uh, so, we would send in a ticket to engine and then they would prioritise the ticket in order of what needs to be done more urgently. Engine are usually very busy. But, as you know now, that's fixed and we can now determine the way that NPCs face. thing that QA do when we get content is we also give feedback. And so you can see here on the left what the dragon pickaxe originally looked like when it came into QA. What wasn't particularly impressive and to be honest it looked like an umbrella. <laughs> and so we gave feedback, <laughs> said that it's not suitable um, and now you can see on the right the version that did the live game. And this happens all over the game. A lot of the time, content changes drastically from when it enters the QA to what actually gets released. Okay. <laughs> now, before you all have a go at me, I am aware multi-logging is against the rules in the live game. But here we can see a typical uh, screenshot taken from one of our QA testers. This is during organizing armies, and it really shows sort of the limitations of the size of our team. And also, we need to log on multiple accounts so that we can see how sort of some of our mini games and distractions and diversions work. We've actually got 12 clients running here on a single PC, so this slows the PC down dramatically and really, really does lag an awful lot. You know, it's quite hard testing that many accounts, so we've got to have all these logged on. But no, I'm aware multiple logging is against the rules in the live game. Um, no, actually, none of, none of us do that. She's breaking rules. She is breaking rules. <laughs> She's lying. Um, okay, the murder of Ophelia. Okay, so as you know, this was a recent update uh, to the clan to the clan sister. 
This is the Clan Theatre that you can get once you obtain a Tier 5 Citadel. Raise your hands who has a Tier 5 Citadel now. Nice. Okay, nice. Right, okay. Uh, before I continue, we've got a video to show you, so in true theatre style, action. Okay, so this is Mod Tom H testing this. He's doing a basic NPC check. He is going to check that the Get Orb up actually gives him an orb. Bam. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, that <laughs> it's obviously a problem. Uh, <laughs> Let, I'll, I'll just tell you what the problem actually was. Um, the default op for number two op is always attack on an NPC. So the developer had either the code was slightly wrong or had missed changing that op in there. So you, as you can imagine, if you was if that was to go live, you know, <laughs> poor Ophelia. <laughs> Tom didn't get any any blue emo. He was quite disappointed. I did very much though. You did very free free, free program experience, yeah. So, I can't feel my legs. As you can see, there is something missing. <laughs> What's happened here is when the client tries to add an invalid object or an invalid texture, it adds null. Nothing. So in this case, the waste down of the character, nothing's been added, and they are completely missing. We've got another quick example here, we come to the next slide, of where the client has tried to add an uh, incoming <laughs> label, and we can see the whole model there is missing. If your whole body was missing, you would pick a decent pair of shoes, would you? <laughs> <laughs> you have two pair of shoes. <laughs> a liver. So? So, if you play my buzzing army, you might notice the units, but the cat looks a little out of place. <laughs> what this is, is that because the units are struck down and mobilising armies to get the grand scale, anything else that's in the game's normal size looks completely out of proportion. In this instance, a player has locked into the game with a pet cat following them, and that's resulted in the pet cat wandering around the battlefield. <laughs> and in a recent survey, we found out that 9 out of 10 cats prefer the taste of dwarf. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Stretchy. Um, okay, I guess a lot of you are wondering what that is. Um, when I, this actually, I find this quite amusing when I find this bug. Um, it can come up quite often. Um, this is, believe it or not, an ent from the familiarization minigame. As you know, you get transmogrified into a familiar and you enter. What we see here is a typical labeling issue. Uh, what is a labeling issue? Uh, a label is basically like bones in your body. So you'd have a label up here for the upper right arm, down a label here for the lower right arm, the wrist, etc. So if the labels are incorrect, it will stretch. It's, it's crazy. And um, we've got a video for you. Um, let's watch these guys break it down. Alright, so here you go. It's a KVD entrance. There you go, they just, they, they do look scary. They look a lot scarier there than they do in game. His head's going down to his feet and everything. It's going through the floor a little bit as well. It's looking pretty good. Break the fans if you'd like to see a monster in game like that. <laughs> graphics won't like that. We're getting trouble with graphics. Okay, so this one here, uh, as you can see, it's not much for these guys to stand on. This is what our game looks like when there's no text has been displayed at all. Uh, I shouldn't need to ask you, but whereabouts is this in game? Yeah. Land Bridge, yeah, Doomsday is there. I think my favourite part of this is the little ducks. I mean, they haven't got much water, but they're still kind of, they have a little swim around behind there. But no, kind of interesting. Boom. We're not going crazy. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is the sound that a pack cat makes. So what do we have here then? As most of you all know, this is a scene within a court case. And you're probably aware that you can't take familiars in there. That wasn't the case to begin with. And as you can see, this yank's made its way into the court case in an opposition there. And he's trying to fill his dream of becoming the yank lawyer of the year. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to explain this a little bit. This is kind of strange. Eat, eat cabbage. Right. And see if you speak cabbage. I know there's a history of cabbages within RuneScape, 
And what you're seeing here is a script error that some developers may see if they enter some script into the client and it's not recognized by the engine. This is a legacy script. It was added in by Andrew Gow right at the beginning. So this still happens even in our scripts. Okay, this is quite an interesting bug, and it's one that's only popped up once in game, as far as I can remember. Um, give me an explanation of how it works. This is to do with locks, which are locations. Now, locations in game are pretty much all the scenery things you interact with. Trees, doors, crates, something you don't even interact with, just general scenery. And the way this works for a door or a gate is that when you click to open it, it deletes the closed version and re-adds an open version. Now this can cause issues um, if the version isn't added in the correct spot. So this is what happens when locks go wild. So as you can see here, the game keeps getting added in the correct spot. It's going to eventually read some scenery. It's just going to go through it. And this would have carried on as long as we were able to keep clipping the gate. So effectively, you could take out a large chunk of the RuneScape with a single gate. <laughs> okay, so this is another image we've got from Mobilizing Armies, Walking on Water. Now, in the game, we use something called blocking. This is usually put around the edges of the map. This is kind of like an invisible wall to stop you guys from getting into places like this. And this was actually what happened when we missed one section of blocking. You're able to actually get right into the middle of the water and kind of get take like godlike abilities. I reckon, you know, kind of get it's having a very good attention to detail. And this is what one QI app with a very good hyper detail can get. So let's have a show of hands who can actually see the uh, the issue, shall we call it, in this picture. <laughs> and the rest of it, but it is quite sad though. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look. If you want to just highlight this for you. <laughs> so, what the skeleton the object is to be in key code. Okay, rope flat mountain. <laughs> rope flat mountain. All right, okay. Um, before we continue, can anyone guess which mountain this is? Just shout it out. What was that? It's White Wolf Mountain. It's that's another word for the White Wolf Mountain, isn't it? Ice Mountain. <laughs> White Wolf Mountain. <laughs> Alright, okay. Well, this is White Wolf Mountain, and this is what happens when um, graphics <coughs> kindly delete the map, the height mapping in the area. Okay, so height mapping is what determines the height of the ground. Um, so I'm sure you could all imagine what RuneScape would be like if it had no height mapping at all. It would be pretty boring, am I right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, graphics uh, deleted the height mapping. This isn't on purpose. Uh, sometimes uh, it's accidental. This is what happens if a wear position on uh, an object is wrong. So in this case, the helmet. You try to equip it and the web position is just a little bit further south than it should be, which gives us the loving head crotch. Okay, this is left hand to me. Thanks very much, guys. Um, this is currently in the live game. Yep. This is in a cutscene from A Tale of Two Cats. And as you can see, I don't really need to say what's going on here, but um, I'm pretty sure that's not what it was meant to look like in the Titanic. Is that what? That is in the life game right now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love how the guys left that to me. <laughs> okay, um, darkness swept over the land. No, this is not what happens once or if Zamrak has taken over RuneScape. Um, what you can see here is an underlay issue. Underlays are like the, the basic the basic floor, so like moss, rock, um, stone. Um, so this is what happens when underlays have completely been removed. You can see the blades of grass, but there's no actual there's no pattern underneath. Next one. Okay, we've got another example for you. Okay, so this is the same issue. 
But uh, this is where they're just broken, the underlay is broken. Um, you can see it's forming uh, a red brick road, and yes, it does lead to the wizard's tower. Follow <laughs> <laughs> the red brick road. So, I'm sure most of you know what Ethan's day is done to the do, but what you probably don't know is Saturday night he turns it into a disco of do. This is what happens when uh, lighting decals get messed up, and so you get this weird sort of massive bloom effect because the lighting is way, way up high. Okay, so this shows some very early artwork. This is some very early engineering. Uh, also, not technically a bit other than the fact that you can kind of see through the wall right there at the back. But all I can say is that engineering kind of, I would say increase with a smile, but it's not really a smile. It's more just kind of like straight face, not too impressed. Yeah, just kind of looks cool. Oh, I think so. <laughs> okay, not so epic, yeah. Okay, um, Tom decided to add this one in because he knows it makes me angry. Okay, it's it's the fence. This is on Tutorial Island. It's it's a fence. It has no purpose. It's not holding anything in. I mean, it could be holding in the flower. It's not holding in anything, is it? It's just, it's just a fence. Why would you have a fence unless it has a purpose? And that fence has no purpose. Oh, sorry, no it's purpose. not actually holding in the flower at all. It's just kind of like... Just that it looks like to be even more angry. It's just a yeah. thing. Guys, I'm going to jump in here. They will go on about this all day. I have heard it. It's just pointless. It's just a pointless fence. Nothing. Moving on. <laughs> you like the fence. So, <laughs> what on earth is going on here? Well, as you can probably guess, this is a sizing issue. And it was to do with the player loyalty hat, as you can see. First question here so, does size matter? <laughs> So this is me teleporting to the BOH. <laughs> <laughs> what should you do when you go? <laughs> First thing you do here when you're at home, you're going to go to the kitchen. You're going to go to the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> hungry, hungry. Okay, I'm having a think. What's going to taste like? What's the I know. Mm. No, 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 no. No, no, no. As I said, first of all, this is a sizing issue, and it goes to show that when one extra number can be added to the resizing, it's hundreds or even probably thousands of times the result, and that's what's happened here, and that's what I'm being heard. Okay, I'm afraid that's all we've got for you. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we do have one very final thing to leave you with as we walk off stage. Uh, so, yeah, it's something very special for you to enjoy. Play the video. speak to them quite a lot and uh, uh, it's down to also the, the individual animator they might uh, want to animate it maybe slightly differently to how uh, another anim animator would like so um, it's, it's down to preference as well really. Yeah, yeah. I mean you say that you communicate with you with the animators when you're creating creatures, um, but what sort of things you would actually specifically highlight about this about 
Yeah. 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 This session, as you're probably aware, is uh, things you will never see in RuneScape. Uh, now, we are at the moment tackling, it's just the way it goes unfortunately, it's the end of the day, all the equipment's very tight. We are tackling some uh, issues with technology. Um, so, what we're going to start with, with uh, Mod Wraith and Mod Chris L, uh, we're going to start with a questions and answers session, uh, where you can throw out any queries that you have, uh, while hopefully the technology starts to work, and then we can actually go into the correct, uh, what we were hoping to do originally. So uh, if you uh, would like to give a big hand to Mod Wraith as he introduces the session in its new format. Here we go. Hey guys. Um, okay, so I'm sorry we're not going to get straight into what you've all come here to see. We'll, we'll just go, there's a couple of slides to show you. Um, so, we can start with this very boring disclaimer, okay? What we're planning to show you is our internal development environment, okay? This is not the game that you play, this is the game that is on our private servers, and it will make extensive use of developer cheat commands, okay? Before any of you get worried, these can't be used in the live game, okay? The code that physically makes them work does not exist on the live servers, okay? So, we can do all sorts of freaky stuff, you know, we can set, set our stats, give ourselves XP, give ourselves items, do anything we like. That's what we hope to show you today, but just once again, in case this is all going on YouTube, these cannot be used in the live game, okay? In case any of you get some bright ideas, okay? Just uh, So we're going to try and get you into small groups when the technology starts working. You're going to be able to come up. Ask us what you want to do, you'll be able to play anything you want, give yourself anything you want, do whatever you like. Okay, so that's what we're hoping to do a little bit later once the computer starts working. And in the meantime, we're going to go into the Q&A. So you can ask us about anything, our particular area of content you can see here. But absolutely anything you want to ask about anything, just, just give us a question and hopefully we'll get the technology working. So, to start with, has anyone got any questions about anything? Right down at the front here. Okay, this session is um, things you'll never see in RuneScape. Is there anything that has gone live into the game that now you wish that you hadn't put in? Whether something maybe a bit overpowered or that you can't then take away? Okay, so, so the question was, is there anything in the live game at the minute that we wish wasn't in the live game at the minute? And from a personal point of view, I'd probably say Mm, probably trouble brewing because it sucks. Um, I didn't make it, you'll be happy to hear. Um, in terms of bugs, there have been quite a few things that went live in the game. I remember way, way about five years ago when I first joined Jagex, I put a bug in the game where if you went to Dorkish Khan, the Goblin City, you could sell a piece of cheese to the merchant for 600 million gold. And, uh, <laughs> thankfully only one person did it, and they were very kind and they told us, so we managed to fix it. And they actually gave the money back, which was very nice of them. Um, so that's one thing that I really wished didn't go into the game. Uh, okay, so we've got any other questions? Oh, sorry, one more thing to add. Um, I accidentally forgot to make the thing that controls the Wildy Worm, and it's on the GE. You can't buy it, but there it is. Sorry. So, do we have any other questions, sorry? Anything at all? Anything you want to know about future content? Anybody want to see? Oh, we've got a question right here. About uh, huge NPCs, why can't you make them bigger than they are currently? Okay. The question was about huge NPCs and why we can't make them bigger than they are currently. Well, actually, now we can. Back in the day, back in the day, uh, RuneScape used to work on a different graphics engine, okay? And you know the little small game tiles that the world is made out of? NPCs could be the 1x1, 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, or the biggest was 5x5. Five five. And the problem was, if you made a creature bigger than 5x5, five five, then the game wouldn't render it. It would only render the five squares that it's meant to live on, and anything outside, outside those five squares would be chopped off. But now we've moved to a brand new graphics engine, uh, at least internally, it kind of looks the same to you guys. But now we can do it much bigger, and that's one of the things we're going to show you if it works. 
we're going to show you this MVC that's about the size of the whole Grand Exchange. You know, he's like 64 by 64. That's how big he is. So we can do it. Now we have the technology to do it. And I hope we'll, we'll be seeing it in some upcoming content soon. Okay. Oh, we've got another question right here. Have you ever just made any pointlessly strong monsters that never made it into the game? I, I don't know about uh, I never made it into the game. Some of you may be somewhat familiar with uh, Nomad's Requiem. Um, that was one of mine. Um, I wouldn't say he's pointlessly strong. Um, in terms of how we develop content, what we do is we get given a design, a design brief that says, I want you to go away and make something to do with this. It has to involve these sort of skills. And it will usually tell us what sort of difficulty they want. So we try and tailor it to that difficulty. Then we make it, it goes over to our QA department, and they play it, and they think, you know what, this is too easy, or whoa, 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 this is too hard. So we have people play it before it gets released, so we don't ever make something so hard it never gets released, because if it is hard, QA will tell us, and we'll just tone it down from there. Okay, so we got any other questions? Right. Have you ever made any content with, which didn't fit in for for the public view under 16s? Uh, I don't think so. We've always been very mindful, we used to be, we used to be very mindful of tailoring our game to be suitable for the younger end of the spectrum. So we do, we, well, I don't think we've ever made anything which someone's turned around and said, no, that, that's too risque or that's too violent. So I think actually we've been quite good with that. Uh, we have one question at the back. items and material like fully customizable is there any like plans in the future to make a lot of more of the content like more customizable or adding on to items that already exist to make them more unique to your character like uh, I've talked to somebody before and like like you'll see in the game at the minute is with the, the members loyalty program you can recolor certain items we're going to be doing a lot more of that but one of the things I don't know if any of you guys were here yesterday for this section about the future of RuneScape combat hopefully we're going to redesign a lot of the balancing, because at the minute we think you've got your combat triangle, melee range, mage, it's not balanced. We want to bring them all into line, and part of doing that will be restatting items. So, items which at the minute people all wear the same sort of stuff because they just wear the best stuff. But what we can do is the items will have different stats on them to make different items better in different situations. We're going to enforce the combat triangle. So, if you're a melee guy, you may be good against rangers, but you will suck against mages. So many mages at the minute, they kind of suck against everyone. So we're going to restart everything, make certain things better for certain, uh, certain situations. And so hopefully this will lead to people wearing lots of more different items to get that more variety in there. Any other questions? So yeah, just, just to add about obviously what you were saying about the combat triangle being balanced, um, is there anything you're going to do regarding mages to kind of add them spec weapons which kind of represent how powerful a mage can be rather than just merely having dragon claws for example, armored or god swords which practically can two slash one hit a player whether they're ranged or mage or say like the dark bow which was in for range but obviously has not stayed as powerful as it once was? Okay, well leading on from what we were talking about yesterday one of the things we were hoping to do was to, instead of, um, at the minute you go with your special weapons for their special attacks, what we were hoping to do was, instead when you level up your skill, like for example attack, as you level up your attack at say level 10, 20, 30, 40, you will unlock special abilities. And these special abilities would be similar to what special attacks are at the minute, but they do certain funky things. So, for example, for mages, we want mages to get binds earlier on and we want them to be more effective. And um, yeah, so all sorts of stuff like that. And so hopefully we'll lead, this will lead to less of players focusing on specific items and more on focusing on their skills. Okay, any other questions? That, um, the only way you can actually see it is by using a special uh, developer commands to move your camera nothing. up into the sky and look down. He's, if you imagine, you know in the Grand Exchange, the new Grand Exchange, You've got that kind of cir circular pillory thing in the middle. If you imagine the height of that, this guy's about five, six times the height of that. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we'll be able to show him to you, but under, under a regular screen with your regular camera, you can only see his feet, so. <laughs> okay, next question.
Can you make it so in Soul Wars, uh, the ramp going up to the obelisk is four wide instead of one? Because then uh, mages can't cast the freezing spell and you know people can go past. Uh, it's certainly possible. One of the things actually we want to do with Soul Wars, because it's one of the things that we actually made, we want to have two versions of Soul Wars. We've got the regular version that you will play at the minute, but then we want to have a team-based version where it's much smaller, because at the minute Soul Wars is three map squares wide, this one will be two map squares wide, and you want, we want to be able to you go form a team of 10, 20 people who you've picked and challenge another team, and then it'll be an instant, so it will not be lagging like the current Soul Wars. So, when we do that, we can certainly try and look at the, the ramp to make it wider, but we definitely want to make a smaller version of Soul Wars just for teams to make it less laggy. Questions? Uh, will there ever be mounts? <laughs> because it's, it's annoying when you run out of energy. I, I agree totally with you. But I'm um, 99. It's still a problem. I know. <laughs> uh, I wish there wasn't run energy in the game at all, but I'm unfortunately not in a position to get rid of it. Um, in terms of mounts, originally, back to the issue that we touched on earlier with the 5x5s five five not being rendered outside their square, we had the same issue where we couldn't put the player on a mount because it would clip and you wouldn't have, you'd have all these rendering issues. That's why originally it wasn't done. Now we have resolved that issue, but we haven't resolved the issue which is a technical limitation of how fast you can physically move. Because what we tried is we can try and speed you up and make you go faster, but due to the latency of playing the game, once you get to the speed that say a horse should run at, it looks fine on your screen, but on other people's screens you just jump along like that. And so we, until we solve that, we can't add mouse into the game. It's, it's definitely something we want to do, but currently it's not technically possible, and we are trying to work on it, but I can't guarantee they will come into the game, but it is definitely something we would like to see. Will there be more uh, quests where you help the Dark Gods, not just Cybermen and Grudix? Uh, in short, probably yes. I know, moving on to next year, 2012, we are doing some storylines involving the gods. Um, I haven't written the story for those myself, but I do know they're coming. Um, but that's all I know, I'm afraid. Any other questions? Uh, back to the girl who asked about giving us different armors and clothes and stuff. Could you ever do it to where you just put a cosmetic look over your armor so you could still be wearing Torah and whatnot, but then put like, I don't know, one for like a cute little princess top over that and stuff. <laughs> so it doesn't give it stats, it just gives your thing a new look. Um, from a technical standpoint, it is possible, but one of the things um, I'm, think I'm thinking Mod Mark the designer would not be keen on is people being able to disguise their true power. So if you're running around in your little princess outfit, but you've actually got full Torah on, um, that's something I don't think Mod Mark will like. So I, we, might, we might be able to do it for cosmetic things, but I think what would probably be more likely is just we add more cosmetic things for you to wear. In terms of, like, uh, if, if any of you play World of Warcraft, they've just introduced a transmogrification system. I don't think we do anything like that. Going back to your rebalancing the combat system in Mage, is it a possibility to change the way that runes work where if it splashes doing stuff and you say it's a ice blitz, you lose 2k to a spot for something that did nothing? One of the things uh, when we do do this combat rework, or hopefully when we do do this combat rework, is we're going to change mage. We can't change mage so that no longer uses runes because we've got the rune crafting skills, so we have to keep that. But one of the things we would change, magic, instead of having fixed damage per spell, damage will derive from your magic stat, to like kind of the way that Storm of Armadale works. So that's one thing we would change. But we're also, as I touched on earlier, leveling up your skills, unlock certain abilities. We'd have different magic abilities. One of the abilities, for example, will be you press this ability and it makes your next spell cost no runes to cast. So all sorts of stuff like that is going to be happening over the next year. Um, would it be possible to have a bank shortcut to withdraw an entire costume and wear it instantly so that we don't have to search for those items in our bank? 
for example, PK armor or some what you know our favourite costume to wear around the game. Uh, yes, and it's something I, I'm actually trying to work on at the minute. So yes. Um, will there ever be any more band or armor? For instance, there's the chest plate and the legs, but there isn't a helmet or shield. Will there ever be any more of that? Uh, it's not impossible. Um, I would say it's probably unlikely to come from the Bandos boss in God Wars Dungeon, but it might be possible for, to extend uh, perhaps a goblin storyline. The kind of the, the cave goblin storylines come to a close now, but it might be possible to open up a new avenue to do with goblins, a new quest line where we could introduce stuff like that. There's no plans currently to do it, but it's certainly possible. Uh, just at the back right there. At the moment, we and items like the Orb of Oculus cannot look up. Is it possible, and do you have any plans to implement that extra dimension? Uh, currently, no. Uh, the reason you can't look up is because there's nothing up there. And uh, in, order to get, in order to get the performance on... Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with 3D modeling, but the, to get the performance, as much performance as we can out of the game, when the graphics team models something like a table, they'll make the polygons for the top of the table, and then they'll go and delete all the polygons on the bottom of the table so the game doesn't have to render them. And so if you were able to look up, there'd just be nothing there. You could see through everything. So um, I'm going to have to say we're not going to let you look up in RuneScape, I'm afraid. Uh, go down the front here. You can actually look up if you use the cheat engine. Uh, okay. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the thing. I was wondering about the abilities you would implement. Uh, would you use hot keys to activate these? Yes, um, one of the things, part of the combat rework, will be to redesign the top level interface. This is the thing that you see in the top left around your mini map, the little stones down here. All of that will be changing and you'll be getting an action bar. So you have a little bar and you combine the keys, one, two, three, four, five, or WASD, whatever you want. And you, all these new abilities will be in a spellbook, kind of like the magic spellbook. And you can click them, you can drag them down, drop them on your bar. You can drag food off your inventory into the bar, you can drag your prayers into the bar, and you can bind any keys you want or mouse buttons and press them to activate them like that. So yes. Uh, just behind him there. Sorry, just to say, um, technology has failed us, and someone from the games department, I think, broke the client on Friday, so it's actually showing a widescreen panoramic, the middle of the login screen, and it's not in this login, so I guess I'll have to stick to Q&A, sorry. Okay, if, if, do you want to come up and answer some questions? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to go and have a look, and... It's just... It's gone. No, it's gone. Fix it. It broke it. It was me. Okay, we have the very lovely. Hello, hello. We have the very lo lovely Mod Grissel here. Uh, in particular, he's the Elf Man, God Wars Man, and the Slayer skill. So, any questions for Mod Grissel? Okay, uh, actually two questions. First is for you. Uh, when you said that we would have on the old look, because I, I still use the small look, not the HD. <coughs> and to quickly answer that, the graphics team haven't designed it, but I've drawn it in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> <laughs> he really has. The company's too cheap to buy me Photoshop. Um, basically, the the bar will be at the bottom of the 3D view when you're talking about the small fixed screen mode. The bar is in the bottom of the 3D view and it's semi-transparent so you can see through it. And the second question. And the second question is for you, because you're the Slayer Master. Uh, would it be possible when combined with the skills that um, we would have silent killing for Slayer? So silent killing like stealth killing him? Yeah. Like, yes, I, sneaking I, 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 up on somebody and... Yes, yes I, I love that sort of thing. Um, I think uh, Mod John A made a dagger in a, a random... Not random, but uh, in a goblin quest. And I remember you do more damage with the special attack if you're not in combat with it already. 
So it's like the opening sort of, you know, stab, you know, to open the combat. And yeah, I'd, I'd love to, mate. I mean, yeah, definitely. Now you've reminded me, I'll put it in my next level. Maybe. <laughs> um, with the Citadels, obviously you've got the portal to get there. Um, but is there ch any chance of putting like a docking station for boats to get around to every dock in RuneScape? So, you know, every dock, even in Ardone and places like that, you can go from there and go to your Citadel because then your Citadel is basically in the middle of RuneScape. And you can I thought the Citadel was in the sky, sorry. Yeah, but theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of the things uh, I am working on at the minute is kind of like a global transportation hub where you've got all the different methods of transport in RuneScape, but they're very disconnected. You've got hot air balloons, you've got boats, you've got magic teleports, you've got all these sort of things. You've got gnome gliders. Well, what I want to do is centralize an access point for all of them in one place. So you'd have a teleport spell to take you to this place, like imagine it like a massive train station. And then in that place, then you can get on all the different transportation hubs and go where you like from there. And you'd probably be able to access the citadels as well. Is that the player in port? Uh, Which not player own port on the map. It would just be a place on the map, like the Grand Exchange is a place on the map, and it would have access to all the transportation methods and RuneScape there. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's one for one for you, Chris. Um, I do enjoy Slayer, and um, I know there's kind of the monsters that people don't like to kill, um, so they kind of block them. Uh, but me, my myself, I kind of I do like getting XP fast, and the monsters that I like to kill, I like to have them dead. So I mean, I know a lot of the monsters are kind of unlocked through quests um, that aren't very like nice to kill, uh, that kind of require items, and they do like, animations and etc. So I mean, I purposely haven't done the quests because I don't want to unlock those monsters, so I have to block them. Um, will there be anything kind of in the game that kind of lets you block the quest monsters without having to take a slot of your Slayer? Blocking, so I can actually like not unblock the dragons, which take me five years to kill. <laughs> it is an interesting question. Um, I am aware that some quests, like you say, I, you would avoid because it would most slow anyway, and it saves you a block task because you block the quest. Um, the obvious answer I would say would be we should get a list of these things and probably try and make them more attractive if they're on the slayer tables, or potentially take that one off the list if it's just not used across the board. Um, one thing we do bear in mind: a lot of this is some of this is legacy problems. We just you know they were in it from the start. Um, a lot of this we can, we can improve moving forward because uh, before branches of Darkmire, I, I don't think a lot of people would probably wouldn't have went and killed Firewatch uh, yeah. with the old flail and this amazing hits. But um, now we've got the uh, list of wood weapons, it, it's a lot more attractive. And other than the fact they don't draw charms yet, which I think we're working on, and now our balance is back off holiday, we can actually put in. Um, I think they should be even more popular than they already are and, and make a, a viable slayer target for you guys. And again, a reason to quest through and, and unlock them. Uh, question for you, Chris. Uh, are there any plans to perhaps make the Slayer skill uh, more involved in the whole combat aspect, whereas like you get combat levels for raising your Slayer? So, like where you've got summoning and prayer, they get 12 combat levels overall. It would even it out 150. It just seems kind of nice to have. <laughs> <laughs> it's a call for mod mark, but um, no, sorry, not 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 planned at the moment. I've got a skiller who's got like a two slayer um, on penguins, so I'd rather you do that. Thank you very much. I'll let you two battle it out after. <laughs> Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm already a nice summoning, and one of the best things about water fiends is the charms, but they're quite a high level and slow task, so I often skip them. Um, what about making some slayer creatures that maybe don't drop such good stuff, but are lower level, <laughs> so I can carry on doing my task without skipping them? I've killed hundreds of thousands of oh, me too, me too. <laughs> it's, it's a fair point, but I think that, that probably falls into a separate category of if you want charms, you probably take the hit now with the XP. Yeah. It's, it's a niche one now, I reckon, but... Yeah. It's something we, uh, we focus on more. I think the, the what things was in the original summoning charm balancing sort of thing. So it probably wasn't intended like that, and I'm pretty sure some people don't like this and like that. Like the whole uh, ice barraging rock lobsters, for example wasn't probably intended, even though know, I did it. And uh, I think it's, it's all right that it is like that, but I don't think we'd try and... Again, same, in the future, we'd, we'd work with to make sure that, again, I'd like to make sure the Slayer tasks are good for Slayer, um, if, if I make them. And I try and make sure people make another one so run for you. Uh, yeah, with the um, magic armor, 
I was just wondering, is there um, any more concept with, because you've got like only skirts mainly for magic armor, the only exception is the split bark armor. I was wondering if there's going to be any more just legs instead of skirts. Well, yes, as part of the thing we mentioned with the combat rework, we want, at the minute, the reason why mage armor sucks is because it thematically it's made out of cloth and the cloth doesn't really do anything. And so what we do with the combat rework, we'd have some new magic armors, we still keep the existing ones, but we'd emphasize their melee defense because magic's meant to be good against melee. So we'd emphasize them with like bolted on plates or glowing runes or force fields, that sort of thing. And the graphics team can go nuts with it and make them look awesome, so yes. More recently, you guys have been coming out with a bunch more skills. Like, do you guys have anything in the works for like multiple skills that are coming out that don't already exist in game that either are kind of like a glimmer in your eye or even farther in development? Was that a skill we'd like to make? A skill that either you would like to make or are in the process of putting into the game. Uh, well, I can tell you, there's no skills currently in development at the minute. I can definitely tell you that sailing isn't a skill in RuneScape. <laughs> and um, from personally, I'd like to see a skill kind of like uh, an enchanting skill where you make your stuff better. So like you've got your favorite piece of armor, I'd like you to be able to go and make that better. Although that kind of sort of steps on the toes a bit of smithing, because smithing should sort of really do that. I like some sort of skill that you can make your stuff better, but there's no skills currently in development. Uh, there might be a skill starting development next year, but that is just a guess. Um, with the elf storyline, <laughs> how long left is this? And is it good or bad things that we're looking forward to? And second question, is there anything that's going to happen with Tutorial Island? I know Tutorial Island comes up a lot, and there are currently no plans for it, although I'm sure at some point we'll give in and use it for something really creative, or like the end game for some reason. Um, as for elves... Couldn't you make it into a tourist attraction? <laughs> tourist attraction? Yeah. <laughs> like noobs in cages. Tutorial Island, you walk around. As for elves, I got dangerously close to getting it this year. Um, However, I got pulled onto a, a various amount of projects, most of sort on this list. Um, and I got to the stage where I was writing a brief for it, and it's longer than I care to remember. But uh, everyone who read it seemed to get the old tingle down their spine, and there's uh, some great things in there which are really good twists and stuff I'm really proud of. And I really want to make the next quest, which will hopefully bring the city as well, it's going to be a big update. Um, I really want to make it like a day's worth of questing, um, potentially even with a walkthrough there. I'm talking, uh, you know, what well, graphics what, you know, I want to, I want to push past what well, graphics and I want to really make a, a big quest which brings out a lot of the lore, which I've, you know, obviously researched a lot into. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of getting the graphics done, because uh, when people read the brief, they either get excited or scared. Yeah, scared is generally the graphics, guys. It takes a lot to bring up a city, unfortunately. But um, it is on the radar, definitely. I have a follow-up question. Do you plan to have any big boss battles? I always plan big boss battles. Damn it! <laughs> if, if, if the game was working, you'd see a, a big, big, big boss. Where well, his foot, but... <laughs> One day. Have you considered having a um, seduction skill? You know, we have, like, the Ring of Charis, where we do a bit of charming. We can make jewellery. There's chocolate, there's flowers. Can we not be getting in there with some of, the, some of our friends? Uh, I think one of the legal requirements for our game prevents us from doing that because we are played by little kiddies. Um, but we can learn from it. Well, uh, one of the things uh, Mod Mark, our lead designer, talking about the sort of the Ring of Charos aspect of things, he's very keen on us doing something with kind of psionics and telepathy and telekinesis. This might be happening as part of the of a, a much, 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 much further addition to the combat system. He'd like to see the combat triangle evolve into a combat pentagon, with Cyanops being one of the new points. Uh, this is just something that he's just said randomly one day when he was getting a coffee, you know. But he's, I know it's definitely something he wants to do, so seeing more mental sort of stuff with the Ring of Charis, that's definitely on the horizon, but I, it, nothing's on paper yet. The pentagon is five. 
He has his pentagon is five, yeah. so we've got psionics and the other point that he's sort of dancing around, he always, he's got this big thing in his head about elemental combat, but then you're sort of getting in towards mage territory. He wants something uh, elementally, but that's as far as he's got with the idea, so... Artwood at the end. No. <laughs> the question was, will you ascend to Godhood? And unfortunately, no, because once you ascend to Godhood, there's not really much for you to do in the game, and then you stop paying us membership, and we don't like that. <laughs> Can we get a standing in the bank skill? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, say you already had that skill. Um, Just on a cape, right? Uh, any other questions? Have you ever considered doing a uh, like over the shoulder camera chase mode so that when you're running around, because as the graphics keeps getting better, it, especially with the new trees, it actually looks really nice when you're running along, but I think most people look from top down just because it's easier to navigate. Uh, I got some. We, we have done a lot of camera work recently. Um, most of it obviously looks the same to you in the game, but we can, we can like Chris said, to see my demon boss, you have to you know, raise it above 20 banks, but we can manipulate the camera in ways we couldn't before and uh, a lot of the guys using the cutscene editor are now bringing in angles you, you wouldn't have seen before. Obviously, Chris, I think you touched on the problem about there's no polygons underneath, so some of the old models might suffer from lack of everything. <laughs> but, but, um, it is something that is, it is possible. I mean, obviously, I don't want to turn RuneScape into an FPS, but I mean, for chase sequences, I've always wanted to make an Indiana Jones crash bandicoot running towards the camera sort of thing, and, and that's within the realms of possibility. Um, and it's I, I, personally, I'd love to explore, and I know I'm not alone. Will we ever get the chance to burn down the research tower or the uh, Lumbridge Castle? You sound like the wise old man. Well, there's nothing specifically preventing it from happening. It's just where do we go once we've done that? Because then we're going to have some players in the game with a burned down tower and some players without one. And so it's, it's possible, but. The benefits will have to outweigh the disadvantages, so at the minute I, I can't see it happening. Uh, going back to what somebody said about the camera angles, there is actually a bug I'd like to report <laughs> that when you run through the, uh, the Brimhaven dungeon into the Steel Dragon area, your camera does go to the left and it zooms in and it stops you from attacking, it stops you from uh, drinking your super anti or whatever, and I lost all of my stuff. And oh, really, really. So, yeah, and uh, another... Mod, Mod Hunter, QA, was in the back and all of a sudden he's not here. <laughs> so he uh. um, and uh, another thing, somebody shouted out about turning the Tutorial Island into that hub that we were talking about, the big teleportation thing. Woo! Maybe you could turn it into like a hub island. Okay. Okay. Oh, you mean put the transport stuff on the tutorial island? Yeah. Because oh. then you don't have to make another island. And then it's actually useful. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chris's next thing he's working on, so I'm sure he can put it in. It's a good idea, and, and I'll, I'll certainly pitch it tomorrow. Uh, uh, I think you should maybe make a quest out of it. Uh, tutorial island revisited. You know, like. But uh, my question is, uh, is there anything else in the pipeline for Dungeoneering? Are you completely finished with it yet? No. <laughs> can, However, can you express some more information on it? The answers are in here, but they're not going to come out. Um, uh, we've had a big meeting, a, a big meeting about what is past 120. It was always on paper when we made like the strange power event and when we thought about the, the storyline and Bill Rapp's notes as he, as he goes down. Sorry if anyone's not seen this, so that spoilers. Um, there is a plan. However, it will be big, <laughs> and getting a city for the elves is, is is big as well. But it's we know what we want to do. It's just about getting the time to do it. Um, the more people that do get to 120, the more viable it, it is for the business to do. Because obviously, if if two people had it, it's it's a hell of a lot of graphics time and content time to throw at two people when we, it would obviously be a five-person encounter. I imagine with other solo aspects, but. Yeah, it's a massive update, and now we've got more people at the, at the high end of the skill ready for this, 
I mean, that brings the viability of it forward, and you know, and and it can only get closer with with time moving on. But that's the same for everything as well. I'm saying there is a plan. It's it's a, it's a way off now, so, but we're not done with it. And just uh, following on from that, when we've got plans for what's at the bottom of Demon Arm, I know Mudmark wants to encourage more rewards from dungeoneering, things that potentially you can use both in the dungeons and the real world. Uh, so definitely more rewards to come, and when, if we get the time, more of the storyline to come. I know there's technical problems right now with that, but is it possible to have print screens of those up the one we're missing put on like the RuneScape oh, forums oh. to look up later? I'll get you a YouTube video or something. But that, that would be good. Thank you. Of course. Is there anything in the work for uh, in the works for group quests? Like, for example, back in the old days when you know you had to be part of the Black Arm Gang or the Phoenix Gang. You know, right now quests are very much a solo thing, and I was wondering if you would steer it in the direction of group playing. I don't know about steering all quests in the direction of group playing, but when uh, you know when you you're allowed to make a quest as a developer, you can suggest that as a route to take. Um, it's not been done a lot because you know for everyone that wants to do a group quest, there's you know obviously the opposing side of the argument. Uh, there's none in development right now, but it's it's never off the card, and it is something we can do. Uh, a lot of the things you see recently now, we use a lot of instancing work, where you you go in solo, and, and that might be instance in big areas, just because we want you, the hero, to be exploring the area on your own and uncovering the facts and the story and the lore. Um, and that does sometimes take away from the multiplayer aspect of the game, because you're on your own, and you know sometimes having your friend doing the same quest, and maybe not you know with you, but they're with you. Sometimes that is is it adds to your experience, uh, and I know. Paul Gow himself actually cared a lot about this in Richard the Majorat because it would have been easier to instance like uh, Mostly Harmless, for example. But when you when you're running around through the fireballs in, in Ritual with other people getting hit left, right, and centre as well, it, it makes it more of a, a multiplayer environment. And, and obviously, it is a multiplayer game. And uh, I know he took very careful attention again with Kef in that agility area to make sure other people are there as well. So it's it's to encourage that sort of team play and, and crossing barriers together. It wasn't together together, but again, um, it's something we we can do. It's just a matter of how many people like it versus don't do it. Just following on from that, uh, well, we can do multiplayer quests in the future. We're never, never going to enforce multiplayer quests. We know where you have to get the two halves of the shield around, out of, of our out. That is something you don't have a choice about. You have to have someone else to do it with you. We're never going to enforce that again. So while we might have quests which you can complete multiplayer, we're never going to say you have to do this quest multiplayer. It will always be an option to do it single player as well. Uh, are either of you uh, answering questions about the Void Knight trilogy? Yeah. All right. Well, um, the the last quest where you uh, got the Chorus or however you say it, um, you did. Yeah. All right. Well, it, the the last boss, the the boss monster, it seemed like so much work, and the sword sucks. Okay. I, I mean. Uh, well, we've got this guy here who's saying Karazi Sword sucks, but I've had all manner of people come up to me all weekend saying it's overpowered. Um, I, I think uh, the sword, I think the sword's just about right. Uh, when we do our combat rework, the sword will be changing. Um, uh, um, what, what would probably happen, this isn't, nothing's written down, nothing's set in stone, but what would probably happen is the special would move off the sword and become an ability in its own right. Uh, but if you use that ability whilst wielding the sword, it'd be better. Um, so, yeah. Kind of to add to that, is there like any chance that if the, that is an ability while using the sword, it will become a melee-based attack? Because, I mean, the amount of times I've been PKing in my expensive armour, mage bank, etc., and then somebody's pulled out a grassy sword and hit 600 on me in my full Darrocks or whatever I'm wearing and killed me, because obviously oh, I wasn't expecting to be hit by a magic attack, so I'm not prepared for the, the death that's going to be inflicted on me? Uh, it's not impossible, but I think the, the basic concept behind it was that um, you have to be prepared if you see someone without their sword, that magic's going to come. Um, it, it, some, I, I admit, sometimes it is unfair, but um, I think if it does become an ability in its own right, it may become a magic ability. Uh, it, because if it's not tied to the sword, it doesn't make sense by training your strength in somebody who can shoot magic at people. But nothing's written on paper yet, so we don't know. Uh, yesterday in the session was when these abilities come in that you put on your action bar, some uh, to let you have sort of like a forewarning that they're coming, 
if someone goes to press their Karazi Sword special ability, it, they won't suddenly press it and boom. It will be they'll press it, and then you'll see them charging up to do it. So you have a few seconds notice to either run away or press a defensive ability on your part to counteract it. So what is worth noting, Chris came to me when he made Karazi Sword and it was about twice as powerful? Three times as powerful. There you go. Uh, the question was, can you put prayers on the extra bar? Yes, you can. You can put anything on the extra bar. You can put prayers, potions, food, anything you want on it. Uh, the... Could you be able to turn someone into your slayer task or like into a zombie or an undead thing to get the bonus of those undead and slayer things just for like a quick moment with like 99 magic and 99 slayer? I missed the start of this, right? What's that? I missed the start of it, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, if you had, like, the ability to turn an opponent into your Slayer task, so you got the stats from your Slayer helmet against that opponent, or turn them into an undead, so you got the pump, like, you can crumble them or use yeah. your style bounty. You know about player target? Yeah. That sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's not, you know, again, nothing's off the card. As long as so the, the opponent has a forewarning, they're about to be turned into an undead. So, you yeah, know, they're more... He's done this to me rather than, what the hell am I a zombie for? <laughs> <laughs> as, long, as long as everyone's informed in this, in this transformation process, then yeah, it could, could be good. Especially if you've select asked dragons, that could confuse everyone. Um, screenshot button. You want a screenshot button? Yes. It's called print screen. Through the paint, and then save the paint file, and it's annoying. Don't switch gear. How is quick screen capture? Uh, a screenshot button, I'd say, probably isn't on the highest list of priorities to do. I mean, we have a game engine developer at the back of the room. Uh, is it technically possible? Is it technically possible to give players a button to save out a screen as, say, a TGA file built into RuneScape, or is it something that you just prefer them to do with the Windows naturally? Just to save it to their hard drive. Of putting abilities down on the thing and obviously having like uh, food and potions and stuff, does that um, like give an opportunity for more invent space or like multiple bags or something? Uh, if you drag an inventory item onto your bar, it will still be in your inventory, you can just access it from your bar, so it won't give you more inventory space by putting like your sharps on your bar. In terms of increasing the size of your inventory, it's technically possible to do, but we don't want to do it at the minute because uh, we just think we like it the size it is. Personally, I'd like to see more items that stack in your inventory, but this is more, it's way above my pay grade. It's more sort of my mark level. Will we ever get PvP loot share in the wilderness or other PvP areas? It's not on the cards at the moment, but again, given how loot share works, I could imagine we could create some sort of similar system if, it, if there's enough demand for it. I think one of the things we touched on yesterday was moving more, not necessarily away from the wilderness, but more perhaps introducing a more structured form of PvP where you can form like teams and then challenge other teams to PvP, and it could be dangerous. Um, maybe it's getting some sort of tournament system and leaderboards, but we haven't really thought too much about it. So it is possible. Do you want to do a few more to wrap up with the timing? Okay. Uh, again, with your combat rework, is there a possibility to merge part of summoning and a part of magic to summon an undead zombie to fight as your minion for in like 30 seconds? It's just a regular, like an armored zombie or something. Uh. What, well, yes, but what we'd probably more do is summoning would, the, these abilities you mentioned, you level up your abilities, you unlock, uh, you level up your skills, sorry, you unlock certain abilities. What we'd do is summoning, you'd still level up summoning to pick different familiars, but summoning would also have abilities you unlock. And one of these abilities could be you suddenly 
summon something alongside your familiar to fight with you. This could be an armored zombie, it could be anything. But we haven't planned any of this out yet, but it's certainly something on the cards. Any other questions? Uh, could we get a tool, maybe, or something to get uh, color from other stuff than the completions of math games? To match them better. Sorry, what was that? Can we get the tools so we can get the uh, colors from all of objects instead of just the uh, completions of Max Capes? So it's easier to match them. You're about getting the colors from any item in the game? Yeah. Ooh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do on lunch tomorrow. See if it's possible. <laughs> Hi there. Um, with Dungeoneering at 120, are there plans for the other skills to go to 120? And if so, would it change the combat and being able to hit harder and things like that? Uh, currently, no. Modmark has made the decision that no skills aside from Dungeoneering will go above 99. Um, if skills ever were to, which I'm pretty sure they won't, it would impact on the combat. It would give you new abilities. But at the minute, Dungeoneering is the only skill to go to 120. Why was there the decision to make Dungeoneering 120 as opposed to the 99? I asked that when I joined. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the, the answer was Modmark, or, or the, the designers on the, on the project, wanted it to be sort of like the reason you would train the other skills in RuneScape to, to you know, get 99 Smith into Smith, the Promethean Primal, sorry, not Smith Primal, uh, Smith the, you know, the Promethean Armor, open all the doors, open, get the best potions, you know, kill the best bosses. It was sort of designed to be you know, a reason you would train all of the skills, and I, I can see from how it's gone that you know, the max players in the dungeons generally get ganked to open the doors and do everything, but um, I mean, it does contribute to sort of the end game of, of RuneScape, so if you've done all the other skills, you're going to be a lot more awesome in Dungeoneering by default. Um, and I think that's sort of the reason. The 110 20 curve as well, it was, we wanted it to be, or we were asked to make it the slowest skill to level to max, but not the slowest to 99, which would be slayer at the time, I believe. So we made the XP curve, so you get to 99 quicker than slayer, however, you get to 120 slower than slayer. So people would see that progression to the mastery earlier on, but then they still got the, the extra bit to keep them going. Okay, uh, we've just got the time for one more question. Is there anything that, that is in development that you can tell us? Okay, everything that's in development that I'm working on, uh, I've mentioned the transportation hub. One of the things actually you'll see in a couple of weeks' time is, you know the XP counter in the top right? That's going to be changed. It's going to be split into three, so you can have three counters. You can assign each one to track an individual skill, or you can keep it tracking all skills if you like. We're also going to introduce XP pop-ups, which you can turn off if you find them annoying. As when you get XP from something, you'll see a little thing pop up from, say, the tree you've just cut down, telling you how much XP you got, and show you a little bar showing how far you are towards your next level. You can turn it off if you don't like it. So that's something coming in the next few weeks. And then further on from that, it's just going to be combat, combat, combat for me. Um, I don't if, if we get permission. If we get permission. And I don't think uh, anything else that I know about is on the horizon. We've got a couple of cool question development. Not work, making them, working on them personally, but we've got one quest by Mod Tony. Uh, he did all the original pirate quests, so you're going to really like that. It's really funny. And um, another quest, I think Mod Anna's making a quest at the minute. Uh, sat at the back of the room there. But I think that was top secret. Uh, but yeah, lots of cool stuff to come. Train your farm maker for that one. Um, yeah, uh, personally, um, uh, the one I've got at the moment alongside Chris's sort of transportation and his uh, XP thing he was talking about, I'm working on something. I won't say what, but it's one of those things that when it's in the game, you probably say, why wasn't this here five years ago? And it makes it a lot nicer just to, just to interact with it on, on the whole game. Okay, guys, we've officially run out of time now. But as a special treat for you, if you all head downstairs to the Ardone Market, you can have something really fantastic.
any higher than that anyway, so. Well, let's not start at 99. So wait, wait, <laughs> early. Okay. Start at 10. Start at 10. No. Thank <laughs> you.